Welcome back. The objectives of this video are to introduce the half angle formulas. We'll use the half angle formula in one of our samples and we'll also solve a trigonometric equation using the half angle formula. At the end, I'll provide a list of various other angle formulas which you may encounter. So here's a list of the half angle formulas where the sine of u over 2, or some angle divided by 2, equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus the cosine of the angle, not the angle divided by 2, but the angle, and then all over 2. So the tangent of some angle divided by 2, u over 2, equals one of these two versions, 1 minus cosine u over sine u, or sine of u over 1 plus cosine of u. And the cosine of u over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cosine of u over 2. Something to keep in mind that the sines, positive or negative, of sine of u over 2 and cosine is going to depend on which quadrant u over 2 lies. So let's find the exact value of the sine of 105. So for our purposes, u over 2 is going to equal 105 degrees. That means that u must equal 210. The good news here is we know where 210 is on the unit circle. 210 on the unit circle is in the third quadrant, and the ordered pair there is negative square root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. So that's going to be super helpful to us that we are working on the unit circle. So going back to our half angle formulas, we'll take 105 and we'll rewrite that as the sine of 210 over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 minus the cosine of 210 all divided by 2. And we know the cosine of 210. It's on our unit circle. It's negative square root of 3 over 2. So we have plus or minus the square root of 1. So I'm going to call that 2 over 2 minus the square root of 3 over negative square root of 3 over 2 all over 2 which is equal to plus or minus 2 plus the square root of 3 all over 2. Since 105 degrees is in quadrant 2, y is positive, so we can discount our negative answer and the sine of 105 using our half angle formula is plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 all over 2. In our third objective, we'll solve a trigonometric equation using our half angle formulas. We want to find all the solutions of 1 plus the cosine squared x equals 2 cosine squared x over 2 in the interval of 0 to 2 pi. So we have our half angle formula, x over 2 tells us we can use our half angle formula here for cosine. So I've got 1 plus cosine squared x equals 2, and then using my half angle formula, plus or minus the square root of 1 plus the cosine of x 
all over 2. But it's cosine squared, so I can now square all of that. So I have 1 plus cosine squared x equals, and the square and the square root simplify here. They're inverse operations. And the other thing that happens when I'm squaring this, this negative becomes positive. So I have 2 times 1 plus cosine x all over 2. Now these 2's cancel, leaving me with 1 plus cosine squared x equals 1 plus cosine of x. I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides. I'm going to subtract the cosine of x from both sides. So my 1 drops out. When I subtract 1 here, those drop out. And I'm left with cosine squared x minus cosine x equals 0. I'm going to factor out the cosine of x. So I have the cosine of x times the cosine of x minus 1 is still all equal to 0. So setting each of my factors equal to 0, cosine of x equals 0, and cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. Cosine of x equals 1. I'm in the interval 0 to 2 pi, so cosine of x equals 0 at x equals pi over 2. And cosine of x equals 1 at x equals 0. In fact, it also, cosine of x equals 0, if I think about my unit circle, uh, it's pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So I get x equals pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, and x equals 0. And we're looking at just in the interval of 0 to 2 pi, so we don't have to worry about a general form here, and that's our final answer. And on the following page, we've got our list of additional formulas. I would encourage you to print those out and keep those handy. Uh, again, I'm not going to ask you to memorize these, but have these formulas available to you. Our power reducing formulas are product to sum. So we take a product of the sine and cosine and convert it to sums or differences. Okay and sum to product formula. So we've got the sum of the sine equals, and then it turns into multiplication. So addition and subtraction become multiplication, or multiplication becomes addition and subtraction. So product to sum and sum to product. So keep those handy, and we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.